think this through. <laughs> there you go. Wow, uh, this thing is huge. Mike decided to go with a 100 gallon freshwater tank. So if you're wondering what that looks like in a bus, this is pretty much it. This is kind of tough because when this is full of water, this thing will weigh like 800 pounds. And that's not so bad because when it's full of water, it's at its most stable other than empty. It's when we're driving down the road and it's half full and water sloshing around in here. And then it builds up inertia and, and hits the end and can cause this thing to move. And that's what we're trying to prevent here. So, um, unfortunately, underneath the bus is really inaccessible. And so putting in a screw from the bottom with washers and everything like that was the first choice. But it's just virtually impossible to get to. So we're going to use these big old lag screws. We'll drill down a pilot hole. This will dig in. Turns out these um, ribs underneath aren't just... Uh, um, simple uh you know ribs are actually like this formed thing and it's kind of like this it's a box and so it goes up and it goes across and comes back down so this is actually some decent metal that we can get into with this so what i'm hoping which i'm fairly certain this is going to be the case with these things screwed in pulling down on the two by four um the two by four itself will get a whole bunch of drag and friction onto the floor here so any movement will be transferred to the whole floor and not just these screws. And uh, so I'm pretty confident it's not going to move. If we're hitting bumps that are big enough to move this thing, then we're probably going to have bigger problems than our water tank. Like it's going to be catastrophic. So that'll be good. We did a pretty good job picking the, the tank though. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, the height of the tank is exactly the same height as that ledge in the back. So. Perfect. I would like to say we did that on purpose, but that's not really the case. It just worked out that way. stands for but I do know this there are multiple types of pecs it's the up-and-coming easiest way to plumb and they're using it in, in, in normal houses and and things like that but it's it's non-standard there are multiple standards of pecs and so not being a plumber um, I did a lot of research being a former engineer I'm good at research so <clears throat> I went out and I started to determine which pecs I should use. And I was first introduced, in it by, introduced to it by looking at some other people who were doing buses. And I thought, oh, what a good idea. And it was so easy. They were crimping stuff and it seemed like it was foolproof. But then these people started turning on their faucets and stuff or turning on the pump and getting these leaks. And the only way they knew is the pump wouldn't stop running. And so they're just like, wow, I wonder why the pump keeps running. And then they start like coming to conclusions that, well, the only way the pump would keep running is if the pressure wasn't high enough in the line, I must have a leak. And then they'd start opening cabinets and, and sure enough, there's like five gallons of water is poured on inside of their bus somewhere. So that got me thinking like, well, maybe PEX isn't a good idea. So I started looking at what plumbers were using. And plumbers were using something called ProPEX or Up Honor, U-P-O-N-O-R, Up Honor. And a, one plumber in particular said, look, if you want this to be there for 25 years from now, then you want to use this stuff. And that's what this is right here. Now, 
Unfortunately, I didn't do enough research about this. I did, but I got some bad information. And that was basically that you need to stick to one standard. They don't intermix. So you got shark bite, you've got up honor. There's another one I can't remember the name of. It's not as common because you'll find shark bite all over the place. Huge areas of it in Ace Hardware. Um, but this is the stuff we're going to use. And the reason we're going to use it is because it's just the best solution. So I just want to show you really quick how this stuff works. Let's see what I've got here. Here's something I probably won't use, maybe. If I'd, I could just cut this out if I need it again. Okay, so this is what it is. You have these collars right here, and these are compression fittings. And then you have this tubing. This is PEX A tubing. There's PEX A, there's PEX B, there's PEX C, which you hardly ever see. But um, PEX A is specifically for the Propex stuff. Okay, so you need PEX A tubing, you need these little compression fittings, you have to have the Propex stuff. These are more expensive than the Shark Bite stuff, but you have to have all the same stuff. You have to stick with one standard and just go with it. So the way this stuff works is real simple. You put this on so it's flush with the end, and then you have a tool. I lucked out, I found this on Craigslist. I got it for like 25 bucks, I think. And you stick it on here, and what this does is it spreads it as you can see it's just spreading it out spreading it out so it's spread and you want to do it till this is all the way on all the way on like that make sure it's all the way on here and once you've done that then you quickly pull it off and you put it on here like that and you hold it there and I think you're supposed to hold it for 30 seconds but it's, I can see it's already, uh, it moved. But this is coming back to its original form. This is coming back to its original form. And they're both doing it very solidly. And the reason for the PEX A is because it's rated to, to have a memory like that. And these definitely have a memory. And that's not moving. I can barely twist it right now. And it's just going to get harder. And you're supposed to wait uh, 24 hours, I think, before you pressurize this stuff. But, like, I can't twist it now. So that's how that works, straight and simple. And then the other beauty is you can just cut it with this, like that. That was, like, so easy to cut. So as opposed to PVC pipe where you're gluing and making a big mess, this is the good stuff, and the plumbers say, that this is the best one, it's gonna last, so we just chose to go that route. We'll be using some Teflon tape today, that's for sure.
wondering what this mess is. This is the hub of our plumbing. <laughs> and uh, Only it, one hub. <laughs> the main hub of our plumbing. But um, I really wanted to have it so that when we're on shoreline, if we happen to be in an RV park or something, that I can just fill the, uh, the, our fresh water tank just with a throw of a, a valve. So that's what this big mess is. So this right here is, okay, let's explain. This line coming in right here is our shore water. Comes and splits off. This valve here, if I turn it on like that, will then go back and fill our tank, our freshwater tank. Um, with it like this, it then goes over to the hot water heater and branches off into our cold water feed right here. And then goes into the hot water. Here's our hot water feed here. You can see the lines going here where the shower is going to be. Um, so we can turn on from pump to shoreline right here. And that's it. That is the, the, the spaghetti mess that's here. This here is just a clamp I built to hold this and there'll be another one right here just to keep this very, very uh, strong because we're going to be using these valves quite often here. So this right here. It just clamps the pipes and then there's some pocket holes on either side. Just provides support. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay, so walk me through the rest of this. Well, I guess you don't really have to explain it, but I'm going right. to show where this goes along the side of the bus that's going to be behind the wall, behind the shower, behind the closet, behind and underneath the bed, way back here. Whoops, I went the wrong way. Um, and then what are these things? What is the black thing first? That's the accumulator and that that keeps um, When you turn on the water you have immediate water pressure Okay, and it doesn't wait for the pump to catch up and okay So there's the pump, but this holds pressure So you constantly have pressure when you turn on any faucet just like you're sinking your house, right? Okay, and then that's this is where it all comes out of the water tank Man, you did a lot of work on this stuff. Yeah, and I pinched my thumb. Aw, with the tool or on something else? No, you, when I was trying to tighten one of these things here, the thing, these things, Aww. the slip thing got me. Now I'm gonna die. <laughs> Do you need a band-aid for your boo-boo? Kiss it. You get your makeup better. Ow! <laughs> Good for today. All right, let's head in out of this oppressive. Oh, mode. oppressive is right. <laughs> I'm really happy with it. Some plumber's just laughing his ass off right now, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all so good. Please slow down.